Welcome back to a week of. I am currently sitting in the middle of a hurricane, what it feels like. Um, if you recognize the outfit, you know which video I just filmed. Wait, yeah, you know which video I just filmed because it's gonna go up after that. Today is Saturday. And this is going to be a long week of plant to do's. I'm planning to film for longer than a week. I think I'm going to film for eight or nine days straight. I'm aiming for a three hour video this month because I have no life. Yeah, today is Saturday. It is purge night. I'm purging with Alice. Um, a bunch of plants that are just kind of sitting around, some of my props that I've been needing to do something with. And I will show you what those plants are but I need space. I need space. I need space to like do stuff. Hello? Oh, my land's happening. Wow! Today's agenda, clean the plant room, um, show you what I'm purging, and I think that's it. Um, but we do have an eventful week next weekend. With the reason I'm filming so long is because next weekend is the North Shore Tropicals Tropicals Plants pop up um, at her at Lauren's shop. It's a three-day event. Alice and I will be there the first day. Um, we'll be there the morning of before it starts, so that we can give you guys sort of a peek at what's going on. Um, I just got word that they are delaying. Um, they're delaying when they're leaving, or they're delaying the flight by a few days. So. It might be crazy Friday morning. Um, it might be another one of those things where it literally arrives as people are coming and they're unboxing as people are shopping. It, it was madness last time. I don't know how Lauren made it through, but kind of looks like it might be that situation again, which is not ideal, but hopefully we can get into those plants before everyone gets there just to give you guys a peek. Um, but I'm gonna purge. I'm purging because I'm overwhelmed with the number of propagations I have and just plants in general that I don't really love and I just think it's time to get rid of them. So let me kind of show you who I've got. The first one is this um, Baltic Blue Pothos. I got this one from Plants MCA. It was already a pretty big plant when I got it and I trimmed it down a bunch um, and it's freaking grew back. So I just feel like I don't need this big of a pot. So I've taken a couple clippings and I'm propagating it and I would just much rather have a smaller pot. So I'm gonna just sell this entire thing as it is. Uh, so that's number one. Plant number two is this Anthurium pendens. I have tried, I have tried to love this plant and I know that it has the potential to become really beautiful once it is like actually a pendant in Ethereum and not a helicopter but I just don't have the patience I I just I'm over it I I don't I don't want it anymore I would much rather get it into someone else's house that actually has been looking for this plant and will baby it and nurture it way better than I have so she has got to go the next one is a philodendron sp columbia cutting that I didn't even know I had um, it's yellowed a little bit from being in the tent. It was a little bit sun stressed or bleached um, So I'm selling it for super cheap because it is I mean, it's just a prop. It's really little but It's cute. I chopped up my variegated burly marks and this one is a pretty good cutting um, It has pretty high variegation on one side of the stem and lower variegation lower variegation on the other side of the stem and then I have this smaller cutting, which has a lot, a lot of variegation in the stem, as you can see from the little weirdo baby that came out of it. And then I have a low variegation bottom cutting that I'll let go for like super, super cheap. And then I have this um, regular Gloriosum Verde that you would have seen in my week of plant to do's in January. I just, I don't need, I don't need this one. I already have another one, so. That one can go to a new home. I forgot the name of this. I got this from my friend Jen who has like a bunch of really, really cool plants and we do trades and I buy from her pretty, not pretty often, but I buy from her like I would say maybe once a year at least. And she, she's the one where I feel like we both have the same taste in sort of like weirdo plants. And she gifted this, or I can't remember if she gifted this one to me or if I bought it. I think she gifted it to me. Um, but it grows fast and I have chopped it like three times already. So this is actually just 
a propagation and it's pretty big already. The next one is that Philodendron Pink Princess, also from my week of plant to-dos. Um, I got so many people that commented and that messaged me saying like, please don't get rid of that plant. Like I had like five people telling me I should send it to Fern, but it's, it's so cold here right now. I don't really want to ship anything. And yeah, the variegation is beautiful. It's like a teeny tiny little thing, but it's so cute. So obviously I couldn't get rid of it. So I'm going to see if anybody wants to buy that one. I have a Philodendron SP Columbia, the one with the really tight venation. Um, it's a bottom cutting with multiple nodes, it's rooted, and yeah, hopefully this one can find a loving home because it's definitely um, a type of SP Columbia or silver that I feel like everyone needs. This one is just it's my all-time favorite. This one is just a really, really tiny um, summer glory. The one that I have now, like my, my main plant, is it focused? Uh, my main plant started pretty much this small so this one should size up in no time it is unrooted it is like the tiniest little thing um, but it's still got like a decent sized stem and I think it'll root pretty fast in water and I need to get water on this thing ASAP and then I think this is the last one that I have this is a prop from my variegated vitarifolium this lighting is just atrocious I feel like you can't see anything it's so freaking bright Back away. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so this is a prop from my variegated vitarifolium and it's just a single leaf. It's got a decent size chunk or stem. Um, there's probably two auxiliary buds on here. I can see one for sure, but I do think that there's a second one um, since there are like three, I think there's three nodes on here. But I mean, it's a pretty decent size. Mine grew from a pretty small plant. So um, yeah, I think this one should give some good growth in no time. But it's, it's a really small purge. I'm not really in a place right now where I'm feeling super duper overwhelmed where I want to purge like 20 plants or something. I just kind of want to offload some of the smaller ones that are taking up space here that tend to like dry out because I'm not, you know, um, tending to it as often. I just want to clear some of that off of my plate so that I, I feel like I can breathe again. Hopefully I can find some homes for them because I really don't want to have to put these back. I get a fair amount of messages and stuff from people asking if they can buy plants they see on my YouTube channel. Um, the ones where I'm like, oh, I don't need it anymore or I'm going to get rid of it. I don't mind those comments, really. Um, I, I, I think it's a reasonable thing to ask. I only sell locally. Uh, I sell very, very little i i don't really like to sell too much because i find it to be kind of a pain in the butt but when i do sell it's locals only because i only want to do local pickup i don't sh i don't ship plants and i can't ship plants to the states i could ship across canada i just choose not to because it's really stressful so yeah that's just to answer that question <sighs> i feel like i can't breathe i just filmed for four hours straight for another video so I'm a little bit out of breath <laughs> I feel like I need to like call it for today but I don't want to go to bed tonight with my plant room looking like this it is a hot hot ass mess but anyway I'm gonna um, just do a time lapse really quick to clean the plant room and I think I have enough time to kind of just like lay down for a power nap and then I'm gonna get up I'm gonna do the purge and um, I'll pop back on here and kind of let you guys know how it goes
Good morning, everyone. I am still trying to wake up. I feel like a zombie. I slept like crap last night. But um, it's a busy Sunday, mostly because I've kind of been in and out of not feeling well all weekend. So my schedule around the house in terms of tours have been sort of uh, wonky as well. So you guys might hear my laundry going in the basket. You can see my laundry basket in the background. And that's just what's going on today. Hello? Pudge, would you like to say hi to everyone who loves you and and hi to everyone who says you're constantly suffocating? Are you suffocating right this instant? So um, today is a day. Mm -hmm. Today. It's the day that I dread the most. Um, not watering day. I do have to water. Um, we're going to be back here. I'm going to try and give you guys um, some looks outside the plant room this time since the last of week the last week of was all in my plant room but today I have to wash all of my vessels and I get some questions sometimes about like my process when I wash things and it's funny because 
I try and be as thorough as possible, but there are things that you guys point out that I'm like, oh, I never really thought of like talking about that in depth. So um, I have had questions about how I clean my vessels safely in terms of minimizing the amount of grit and soil and things that are going down the drain. Um, so yeah, because I live in a loft or an apartment, whatever, I am very conscious about what I'm putting down the drain. I don't want to be the one unit that backs up everyone's pipes. So um, I'll take you through that today, but I do want to water this shelf first because things are getting a little bit thirsty. But I thought I would show you one, two, three, four plants from this shelf that I'm pretty excited about right now. Um, I just thought it would be a good way for me to sort of wake up here and warm up, warm up my, my voice box. So Pudge, I'm gonna have to work now, okay? I'm very sorry. The first one is this very thirsty Anthurium. This is an Anthurium Vera Pizens crossed with the Chia Pence. Oh, other way around. Anthurium Chia Pence uh, crossed with the Vera Pizens. Pudge, <laughs> he's... Okay, you can sit on my lap. Do you wanna tell everyone that you barfed this morning and then ate it? Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? Oh, his nail is digging into my baginda. Okay, so um, this is a plant that I got from Amanda uh, at Bunny. I haven't really shown this plant too much because I don't know. I don't know why I haven't shown it that much. I guess it's been just kind of there. Um, I do love it and I'm really, really starting to see how beautiful of a plant this can be. This is the first leaf on it, which is not first. Am I okay? This is the last leaf that came in on it. And uh, yeah, she looks violent and dagger-like and I'm here for it. And she's also got a new one coming out. Um, I feel like this one has really, really appreciated being on this shelf. This one didn't have too much trouble sort of coming out of the, the sheath, but I did notice that like some of these, ed, uh, the tips were crisping a lot faster than I would expect them to in terms of like how long they've been out of the the sheet or how long they've been out of the caterpillar punch. Quiet on set, please. So yeah, um, this one grew on this shelf and um, obviously this one as well. So, so far so good. It has really taken to life in pond, but I do need to repot it soon because I can see some of these um, roots are growing upward and I just think that this vessel might be too small for this plant now. So maybe that's something we do today. I was planning to do a little bit of repotting, but I kind of wanted to focus on soil plants since I do have like a brand new batch of soil um, prepared and I can see a few up there that desperately need it. Another update is this <laughs> ginormous begonia lucerna i know that i i think i maybe showed this in the last week of plant to do's i can't really remember but she's just she's going she's growing like a dream she's got a brand new growth point down here and a second one coming out so this one is probably going to be nice and bushy at the bottom somewhat soon and i'll feel better about chopping this top off because um, this one actually came toppling off of a top shelf because it dried out and it was so heavy that it just fell over. So I need to get this into a heavier pot and I'm eventually going to need to cut this soon. One thing that I, so I have really grown to love begonias. I think last year was the year that I really started to appreciate begonias and um, I love, I love them. Um, I love how compact and bushy they grow but they grow so fast that sometimes I don't really know what to do with it. I, I feel bad sometimes about chopping it when it's growing so well. Like look at this new leaf that came out that's just like so dark and big and huge. Like there's only so many times that I can chop and propagate and add to the pot. You know, I'm really not trying to have this massive begonia tree. I think I, I don't think I want that. So yeah, like I love begonias, but in a way I wish they kind of grew slower and I sound very ungrateful, but I feel like if you have a begonia that's become so unruly, you might know what I'm talking about. And this is just one of them. Always in your face, always growing, always has a new leaf coming and it just never freaking stops. I'm gonna be passive aggressive and I'm gonna create a calendar event that says call doctor blah 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 and I'm gonna set it for I'll, I'll set it for 10 
I'm going to invite my husband. It's just, I asked him to do it like five days ago and he hasn't done it. The next, ugh, I hate this. I don't want this. I'm hot. I don't want it. I don't want it. I want my hair up. I hate the feeling of hair touching my neck. I'm telling you, I cannot stand it. It's like wearing an itchy shirt, like with an itchy collar or something. That's what I feel like when I have my hair down. If I can feel my hair on my neck, I just will hate it. Okay, so um, the next one is another bunny plant. This is um, an Anthurium Mag Crystal Lux. And this is the new leaf on it. She did have spider mites, which you can see, I think you can see some of that damage on there. But she's just so cute. She's still, obviously she's still hardening off because it's still like that bronzy color. This was the last leaf on it. So it's already looking, um, I would say significantly larger than the one before. So doing okay. And this one has just been, I feel like this one has been the most easygoing of all of the um, Lux hybrids that I got from Amanda. In general, I have most luck with crystal mags or mag crystals over just the mags or just the crystals. So I feel like this one has like double hybrid vigor, even from being dried out, from being repotted, from being in lower humidity. Used to live in the plant room with really, really like warm temperatures, got spider mites. She's just kind of trucking along like she's got she's got some damage for sure like she's seen she's seen some shit but i mean she still looks so cute so i'm excited i hope like of all of the one i hope that of all of the lux hybrids that i got from her that this one like sizes up the fastest because i think i think it's my favorite but yeah really really happy about her she's so adorable the grand finale in the washing cycle Okay, well that's taking a lot longer than I thought it would, but um, I do have one last update and it's a pretty good one, but I want to kind of tell you guys my thoughts so far on it and some of the things that I can foresee becoming an issue. But uh, in the last week of plant to-dos, I potted this Homolomina Humulus Red Velvet into sort of an aquaponic system or aquaponic uh, setup. And so far, honestly, so good. Nothing has, none of the leaves have melted, which is something that I fully expected. And you guys can see, I think you can see back, oh crap, you can't see, but right here, that is a new leaf, this guy right here. Um, I'm having a hard time showing you the front of it. Oh, right there, that guy. New leaf emerged just fine in here. Um, did not have any issues coming out of the Cetaphil, 100% humidity in there. But I am seeing sort of like what I believe to be like a mold. That sort of like weird mold that you get on older leaves. You know when like the leaf has died off and there's still part of that petiole attached to the stem. So I think something that I'm going to have to do often with this, situ this potting situation is taking one of those long tweezers and just sort of pruning it back because once this falls off, like once all of these old sheaths fall off, they're just gonna be festering in there and floating and it's gonna make things really gross. But overall, you know, it's not it's not too bad. I was, I was sort of expecting like the plant to die. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, well, we're gonna try this, see how it goes and um, yeah, she'll probably die in like two days, but it's been, I don't know how long it's been now, two weeks? It's been two weeks and she's, yeah, she's doing perfectly fine. Sorry, I can't multitask. In terms of the purge yesterday, the purge with Alice and I went really well. It actually went better than we both thought. All of the plants, but three of them sold. Um, the really small uh, Burley Marks variegated that has very high variegation. And then um, the two dragon tail succulents. I fully expected those to not sell because I don't know. I don't know what it is uh, here in, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but definitely here where I live, there's not many people I feel that are buying non-aeroids unless it's popular. Like there will be a really, really cool plant, right? And like no one will go after it 
For example, um, when Charmaine, she's another Charmaine, locally purged her like unique plant, I snagged the Cissus quadrangularis. And it was really only me and one other person that was after it and that was Jen, my friend who her and I have like the same taste and everything. And I got the dragon tail succulent from her. She gifted that to me and I just thought it was like the coolest freaking succulent ever. It's very like Game of Thrones. Am I thinking of Game of Thrones? Yeah, Game of Thrones sort of style plant. And uh, sorry, going back to this, this is quadrangularis. Um, yeah, only her and I were interested in it and the price was like so good, nobody else wanted it. But like the second that I put it on YouTube or like put it on Instagram, it was like more people locally were messaging me like, hey, like do you have cuttings of it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, I, I, I just feel like unless like someone is showing it on Instagram or on YouTube or something, like people, I feel like they're not really looking at the plant for what it is. And again, I don't know if that's just something locally here, but it's something that I've definitely observed. And yeah, I don't mean this to be shady. I'm just saying it's, I'm not frustrated at all. I don't care, but it's just, it's literally just an observation. So it's fine. Um, I'm gonna let those grow out more. I'm gonna let them get established. And then I'm just gonna add it to my pot and I don't mind having more of it. It's a great plant and yeah. So anyway, uh, I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is water just so I can get warmed up a little bit. I was gonna fertilize today, but I wanna do a totally separate video on my current fertilizer regimen because I've had a lot of questions about it and I just want it to be its own video. So I'm not gonna take you through that today um, and I'm just gonna water normally. And I need to water all the plants here, the ones in my kitchen. And then I think that I'm gonna jump straight into washing my vessels from there and I'll just, uh, most of it's gonna be time-lapse, but I'll just give you sort of a peek at how I keep things as safe for the drain as possible.
Okay, so I'm just getting ready to start washing everything, but I wanna show you what I do um, before I start washing vessels. So I have cut out these old rags, these kitchen rags, which are very thin. Um, sometimes I use cheese, cheese cloths, but I don't have any right now. So what I'm gonna start by doing is just like folding this like that. And um, I usually only double layer. I'm gonna try and triple it this time and see if the water will go down. A little bit, it might be a little bit too slow moving. If you're gonna use a cheesecloth, you're gonna have to layer it a few times or else everything is just gonna go right through it. With uh, this method, with the cloth method, it catches a lot more grit, like fine grit, but you have to water or you have to wash things slower because the water is super slow draining. Okay, so I'm gonna just double layer here like this. I got these little drain covers at the dollar store and this is how fine the mesh is. It's pretty fine, like it'll catch it'll catch perlite and bark and all the big stuff, but all of that like um, perlite grit and soil and all of that is gonna go straight through it. So this helps a lot. And then the second part is I have this plastic pot here and I'm gonna double this again and put it down at the bottom where the drainage holes are. And then I'll put this on top and I'll just kind of walk you through a few vessels and then I will get straight to time lapsing. So one reason why I like to wash vessels when they're already super dry is because it's easy to get all of this excess pond and soil down at the bottom while it's dry and I'll just use a brush and kind of just get it all into one pot as much as I can. And just I wish I had gloves but they have a hole in them so I had to throw them away. So I basically fill them. I pour it into this guy first. So you'll see that all of the larger things are being caught in this strainer and it's kind of hard to see but there's like grit that's just sort of like being caught on the actual cloth itself. So I'm gonna do a couple more. Um, hopefully you guys get the gist of it. I don't feel like I need to walk you through any more than that But yeah, obviously if you have like a hose or Like an outdoor space where you can hose things off and just like let it drain off into your yard or something That would be my ideal if I had an outdoor space if I had grass in a yard I would just be washing everything outside so that nothing was going down the drain But I feel like this is like the best way that I can go about washing my vessels um, living in an apartment, so trying my best here.
I have all of the like larger crap in here and I'm basically gonna wait for this to dry because it's a lot easier to get every single fiber and whatever off into the trash than when it's wet. So what I'm gonna do is just let this towel dry as much as possible so that it's easier to take off all of this soil from the towel um, and then I will just reuse it, like wash it and then reuse it. The last thing that I need to do, okay, no. <laughs> Wasn't talking to you. This pond has so many dead roots in it. It came from, frick, I forgot which plant. Oh, my philodendron SP Columbia had so many like import roots that just fell off. So I don't want to put this back into my pond mix because of how much there is. So what I'm going to do is just pick out as much of these roots as I can, and then I'm going to sterilize it. And then I'm just going to add this to my soil mix. Final task of today is going to be to repot and combine two of my crystal mags that I have. It is not ideal for me to repot when a new leaf is coming out, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I feel like if I don't do this now, I'm probably never gonna do it. So, we're gonna do it. They're both in moss and I did get these nice and soaked so that it was easier for them to be untangled. I'm on the floor because sometimes I just like working on the floor and don't really want to be on a table. I actually prefer doing my plant stuff on the floor and like the only reason I do stuff on my table is so that I can film easier. But when I'm repotting by myself, 95% of the time I do it on the floor. I haven't untangled a haven't untangled a moss ball in so long. I am really not looking forward to this. I think that these two anthuriums might be the last plants that I actually have growing in moss. And I've had these for forever. So if these are the last ones, I am going to be very excited because I feel like it was, it took like a long time to get everything out of moss, but I can't really think of any other plant that would be in moss besides these two. 
So that is good news. And I bet you this chunk is humongous. Um, I am going to try and squeeze them both into this glass vessel that I have. If it doesn't fit, then I'm definitely going to do some chunk trimming to minimize how many roots um, are in the vessel. The sleeve looks like it's going to be pretty big if it ends up fully developing anyway. I'm not super worried because I have, these are just two of, I think, five crystal mags that I have and they grow so fast that I'm not worried about if this leaf aborts after this repot. I really just want to get them both out of moss because they dry out really fast. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get them rehydrated. I have to take them to the sink every time. This is the biggest chunk I've ever seen. Oh my freaking gosh. You can always count on Lauren to like give you the world's largest stems. Look at how long this <laughs> chunk is. It's so, it's like a mile long. So I'm gonna cut it like halfway because I do not need all of this stem. So here's what's going on with this one. The bottom is rotten, which is kind of surprising. I don't know why, um, but all of the roots are super duper healthy. So I'm gonna just chop off this bottom part. Get this out of here. And I'm gonna chop even more because this is a pretty massive chunk. This one was slightly more root bound than the other. These two poor leaves are just flowing around everywhere. There is moss everywhere, you guys. I'm gonna be pulling moss out of my ears and my belly button for the next few days. Please, please let this be the last plant in moss that I have to tangle in this hobby, please. I do not enjoy doing this. This is one reason why I'm not really growing in moss anymore. This is like my nightmare still have a really decent root system so i'm gonna clean up because it's it's this is bad this is really bad it's all over my face too i am just mixing some really really finely minced um moss into my moss mix because um i find that when you add a bit more moss when you're moving a plant that was super super rooted in moss for a long time um, my transitions to soil have been way more successful, but you want to make sure that it's really chopped up because as I'm sure we all know, um, moss holds a lot of water, a lot, a lot, a lot of water. So if your fibers are too large, you're going to have these pockets of water in your substrate that can promote root rot. So just want to make sure that they're like finely chopped up so that it's just like evenly dispersed throughout the soil. Like you should be able to like crumble it like this. And I'm just gonna add some soil to this. I truly, I would bring you closer, but I don't want to. <laughs> I'm, the thought of having to move my camera again um, makes me nauseous. I think that's like one part about YouTubing that is the hardest. Um, I talked about this before, like, you know, when I, because I was an avid, I am an avid YouTube watcher, and I'm like, man, vlogging seems so easy, you just go about your day, but seriously, it's like, having to change shots, like change angles, move the camera at all, it is such a pain in the freaking butt. That's why I really like filming things like favorites videos, or like top eight videos, somewhere where I can set the camera down and not move it the entire time. Those are my favorite kinds of videos to film. But when I'm doing like week ofs and repot videos where I'm constantly changing the angle, oh my gosh, I can sleep for like six hours after and then still have like a full night's sleep after too. I have a bin of like mostly amendments that I'm just gonna add in here.
was an extremely messy and difficult repot, but she's done. And she actually looks so cute um, potted together. There, it definitely looks more like a real plant. I feel like they look so weird by themselves, but I guess we'll see once this leaf emerges. Hopefully it, oh, hopefully it kind of finds its way to the other guys um, in the front, but oh, I'm tired. I've done way too much today. I feel like I didn't do a lot, but it's already like midday and I don't know what happened. But anywho, um, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, just an FYI. Ooh. FYI, um, I won't be I won't be filming for week of tomorrow because I will be out of the house all day for a client project. And I already know that after I get home I'm not gonna wanna do anything. I guess we will re-meet on Tuesday. Don't really know what the week has in store. There's nothing kind of screaming at me right now to be repotted. I feel like I've done all my super urgent repots, but there's always something to be done. So we'll figure it out. But yeah, I'll see you on Tuesday. I've been trying to fix the camera for like five minutes because it's crooked. Now I'm thinking my apartment's crooked. Maybe I need a ball. I need to test my theory. <laughs> that didn't do anything. I feel like it should be rolling this way. Okay, well, I don't really know what's on the schedule today. Um, there's nothing that's really popping out at me. I don't want to do any repots yet because I have yet to put away all of my washed vessels from my box of laziness and I just want to keep that under control. But I feel like I could probably do some pest management stuff or maybe some watering in here or I don't know. But let's start with this. It's been a few, it's been two days now. This thing is still soaked. But um, I waited, I emptied out some of it, but I waited for this to get dry because like I mentioned very quickly, it's a lot easier to get everything out of the strainer when it is dry. And now it's all cleaned off, everything is in the trash. And then I've got these towels which are still wet, they're not soaked anymore, but I want to wait until they're completely dry so that I can get all of the debris off of it and then I'll, um, I'll wash it. But I don't want to obviously rinse it in the sink because that will be counterintuitive to the reason I did it in the first place. Um, it's easier to do this in the summer. Usually I just put them on a plate and I just stick it on my balcony and they're dry within a few hours. And you can see some excess soil that was caught um, in this pot. It's not a perfect method by all means, but I do feel like I try to take as much caution um, when I'm rinsing my, my vessels and stuff. Sorry, I'm just trying to find some space here. Something caught my attention. This new Friedeck leaf is picturesque. Why does it look like an emoji? Like if a Friedeck was an emoji, this would be it. Oh my gosh, it's so like, what is it about it? Like the texture, it's like so quilted and, and cute and like, ugh. and look at the variegation on this guy. We got some good variegation there. Are we not focusing today? I had to take off my nail polish. I think I have to go on a little bit of a nail polish ban for a while because they're getting really brittle and I need to strengthen them again. Here's another update in the um, Millsbow cabinet. These new leaves, I'm just, I can't. This was the one I think, I think I showed this, was it this leaf to you guys in a video? And then this one was emerging still. And there's like, this thing is growing really fast and the growth has actually been like super nice and dark and like just perfect. And the leaves are just heart shaped and I have no words. Look at the, look at the ears on it. Oh my God, I'm gonna stuff it in my mouth. The growth pattern is wild though. It's growing from everywhere. There's like 5 million growth points everywhere. I can see one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can see eight new leaves on the way. What the heck, from one cutting, that's crazy. So what should we do today? I feel like today would be a good day to do pest prevention stuff, but who's feeling lazy? I think we're gonna do more pest prevention stuff. I have been slowly sort of chipping away at the collection, um, but I wanna do some of the plants on the outside. I've pretty much pest prevented everything in the plant room, including my tent, um, but I'm gonna do that one again because I do have some pesty plants in there. But I think we're gonna go out into the living room even though the sun's gonna go down soon. And I'll start loading up plants into the shower and we'll get things sprayed out. I did nothing and I worked up a sweat. So I think what I need to do in here, because it's super dark out there already, um, I'm gonna do some lazy pole maintenance. Filling poles, um, fertilizing poles, and that's it. Okay, so I'm just over here mixing my little solution for my moss poles. Um, I'm using Epiphyte's Delight for one part of the fertilizer. And the reason I'm crushing it is because they always come in these chunks. Um, that's one That's one thing I do not like about this fertilizer is that no matter which like container it is, I don't know why, but they're just always in chunks. And it's like really hard to break up. Um, if you had a mortar and pestle, that would be ideal, but I don't own one. But it's fine. It's kind of fun to just crush them up. Um, but anywho, so I'm using this and then I'm also going to be doing some CalMag. Whoa, -ho -ho. I really like the color of it though. It's fun. It's a, it's a nice sort of contrast to all of the fertilizers we have that just look like straight up shit in a bottle. I'm not going to use this much. I just kind of wanted to grind up a little bit more in case I need it. So I've got this 2.5 liter bottle. I have my um, my blood in here because I just find that adding human blood, especially your own blood, um, helps you create a stronger relationship with your plants. So I usually take blood from my arm or like, like a, a thigh or something, but you can really take it from any part of your body. But I really didn't take that much. I probably only took about five milliliters and that's it. I hope you know I was joking. It's actually just CalMag that looks exactly like blood. And then um, I did about, yeah, four, four milliliters for this 2.5 liter jug. And then I'm just gonna be adding a pinch of this Epiphyte's Delight. Okay, maybe more than a pinch because I haven't fertilized my poles in a while. And then I'm just gonna add water to this and get it mixed up. I'm gonna start with the Big XO and the Mills Bow. New Jose Buono Leaf. I was supposed to give this back to Nick last week and um, haven't done it yet. So I have some explaining to do. The roots in here look amazing. I can see some brand new roots forming. I've been trying to be a lot better about my pole maintenance. So looks like 
something's paying off. This plant has so many spider mites, like it's gonna be hard to pick up, but it's it's insane and I'm not I'm not here for it. Avert your eyes if you don't like what these do. No regrets. Oh my gosh, this is the world's tiniest catafil. Are you joking? It's so small, it's pushing out of an auxiliary bud because it's like, you know what, dude, I can do better than that. <laughs> Look at the catafil. It's so microscopic. And this one, this guy just took it upon himself. So you know what? Whatever. Serpens is back as a rehab and I really don't care. Esmeral Dense Narrow. There was a new leaf coming out. Looks like it got stuck, which I'm not surprised about. In my last repot, I kind of talked about how philodendrons have a tendency to push out really wonky leaves for their first leaf after prop propagating. I'm just going to see what happens to this one, but I'm just going to water the pole. have this variegated uh, Monstera adansonii that I am very close to eating at a wall. It was growing really well for a while and then it stopped growing well and now it's just kind of a pain in the butt. And I don't love this plant by any means, so I really should have included this in my purge. And then I've got um, my Albo Epi, which is doing actually pretty well. Um, ever since I got it into higher light, it seems like the browning has stopped, so hopefully that kind of solves that issue because this this is not this is not sparking joy. But I do need to extend this pole. I think I might have one pole this size maybe.
this thing. I'm not, I'm not having it anymore. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a little repot today because that's gotta come off. In case anyone's wondering about the Florida Beauty, it has been doing so amazing since the repot that I did on camera. Um, the newest leaf is this one, and it actually hardened off so much larger than I thought it was going to be. I think on camera I was like, oh yeah, the new leaf is kind of stunted, but it expanded a lot. Like this leaf is actually a really good sized leaf. It has also rooted into this pole, so I am... Very, very happy about this. This is like the worst lighting of all time, but I'm lazy today. I remember filming my first ever week of plant to do's and after filming and editing it, I was like, I am never gonna do that again. That was the most insane, exhausting week of my life. And now I can't believe it's a regular series on this channel it's week of weeks i have to really like pump myself up oh that smells bad i remember i potted this in stinky pond and it still smells like a freaking sewer it is so hot in here. I know I say that all the time, but I'm serious. It's free. It's a sauna in here. Okay, let's start with number one. I said I wasn't going to repot, and now we're repotting. But, um, they're about to see the light. Oh, my poor little serpents. We tried, buddy. We really tried. I mean, at least it's rooted now. I didn't really think this through, did I? Like, what was the plan once it grew out of here? Can you see what I'm doing? excited to start over from a small plant because I have been overwhelmed by the size of this plant since the day it arrived into Canada so not opposed to starting over um, I know Alice wanted an, a serpent's chocolate so I'm gonna give her maybe like a two node cutting just in case something happens to it I could probably even just split this with her I really don't need this much looks like a freaking hogwarts stick i'm gonna wait till these um get a little bit i guess i could snap it now but i usually like to wait till it like actually dies off because they're kind of hard to remove um yeah i'm just gonna leave it so i'm gonna keep this top cutting i think i'll do right here and i'll get this to root and then i think i'll give this big Honka, honka chunk, honka chunk to Alice. It's got at least three, three viable nodes. Oh, I have a good example to show you guys. Okay, okay. I talked about this in my repot and chat that went up earlier this month. Um, I will quickly throw up the thumbnail just so you know what you're looking for. And I was talking about how um, sometimes to wake up some auxiliary buds, all it takes is just a chop or um, sometimes it grows this like barky bark, barky bark over the top. It's so dark. Okay, I think that's better. So you guys can see this auxiliary bud and how it's grown sort of this like barky layer over the top. So what you can do is just 
wet it i would actually recommend soaking it for like i don't know five ten minutes just to kind of soften it a little bit but i don't really want to wait so um and then you take your earwax scraper if you have one and you very very carefully and please only do this if you feel comfortable um using your scraper but I can't catch a break. My lights keep turning off at the most random times. I have them to go off at eight o'clock and then they go off at four, they go off at six. What the heck? So yeah, you just wanna very carefully peel back that layer and it comes off so much easier once you have soaked it for a bit. You can even use um, hydrogen peroxide but all you wanna do is expose that little nipple to the world. And sometimes that's all you need for it to wake up. And that's it. So we've got one here, we've got one here, which I guess I can peel back. I'm pretty sure Alice is gonna cut this into threes, but I just wanna give her like a few nodes for insurance. She's been off her propagating game lately. So if she has more than one node, she'll be less stressed, I think. You know what, this is gonna irritate her, this stick. So I'm gonna just chop off, I'll chop the bottom here. I'll keep, oh, I'll keep these two and then I'll give her this cutting. She'll probably chop it in half and propagate them both separately, but I'm just gonna give it to her like this. Now this is something, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. I just, I don't know why I was so hesitant to do it when I'm literally like, what am I even, what am I growing here? This looks ridiculous. I'm pretty sure all of these roots are dried up. Yep. I have been severely neglecting this. As you can tell, it is like freaking malnourished and just sickly looking so yeah and all of these roots that I grew in the pole over the last I don't know how many months are all now dried up so that's great so I'm just gonna chop and not worry about trying to save those roots and then I'm just gonna take a little cutting sorry you can't see anything I don't know why I'm holding it like that so Here's the problem. I, I'm not great at maintaining poles. I'll admit that right away. Um, that's one reason why I liked using these kinds of poles because they, even though they require maintenance, it's definitely not as high maintenance as like the regular moss pole where you have to wet that thing like almost every day just to keep it somewhat um, damp. But these ones you can get away with like watering it and it's still being damp for like four or five days, just depending on the uh, environment you're giving it. But when you have too many damn plants, it's, it's impossible, at least for me, to keep up with watering poles and remembering to like maintain them. And I used to feel guilty, but I don't feel guilty anymore. It's just life, you know, like I have a job, I have a social life, no I don't, I really don't. Spending my free time watering poles is not an ideal situation for me, or it's not, that's not my idea of fun. So here it is, the double-headed Sodoroi. I liked how bushy it was becoming, but now I'm just kind of getting overwhelmed by it, so I think I'm going to separate it because they're like having a hard time sort of growing together. I guess they can grow like this. No, we're separating it. So you can see this one grew out of this auxiliary bud here. So I'm just gonna chop it off from the main plant. Now we've got this little fella and this guy all on its own. This is actually a separate plant too. Let's separate that too. Okay, so now I have three variegated sodoroids. I'm not gonna keep all of them. I will root it, and once it's rooted, I will figure out what the plan is, either selling it or 
giving it to someone, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just gonna let these callus off a bit and then I'm just gonna get it into water. And then as for this bottom cutting, I'm just going to remove as many healthy nodes as I can and probably just like sell it as a node purge or something, I don't know, or just give it away to someone. Holy crap, I have been filming for an hour. My camera is going to explode. I almost ran away. I really did. I let the I let the camera charge. I got into bed and was like, nope, I'm never coming back. They will never see me again. And then I remembered my Hoyas need to be watered. So welcome to the Hoya cabinet. It is wild in here. It, I don't even know how it got to this point. Ow, everything's cracking. One day I had a cabinet full of dead Hoyas and then the next it's just this beautiful mealy free oasis. I'm not going to show you everything because I will be doing a Hoya, Hoya tour soon. This one is deader than dead though. This yeah, so I'm not going to show you everything going on in here because I am going to do a Hoya cabinet video again. But I'm just going to show you a few and I'm watering with Epiphytes Delight. It looks like a very watered down Gatorade. And I've been giving my Hoya's Epiphytes Delight since... Please don't get this wrong. July of last year? Something like that. Of all of the plants in my entire house, my Hoyas dry out the fastest. Don't know why. It's not even that warm in this cabinet. I think that there's like a, a small little elf that just comes and sucks up all the water. Um, okay, I will show you this Hoya Matilde. Um, I actually repotted this on camera and hasn't grown a lot since, but it's really cute. It took to the transition okay, and um, I don't know, she's like, she's become one of my favorites recently. I feel like she sort of just blended in with the rest of the Hoyas for a long time, but now I, I see her. Something I will show you is my... Hoya abovada that is just becoming one of my most unruly plants in my entire collection. I listen to you guys, I'm not bending these runners until I know that they can loop-de-loop -loop around again, but it's really hard. It's hard to like, I don't know, it's just hard, you know, because they they just grow so fast and like what am I supposed to do with them in the meantime? Like can I do this? At least? Like go back around? But then now this is facing down. Is that fine? Not fine? Am I going to get in trouble? It's just too much. Um, I thought about chopping her but then I took a shear to it and I nearly passed out. So. That didn't happen. I usually don't get super nervous chopping plants. You guys know that I just chop plants like freaking, like a freaking frick. But this one, I don't know. It makes me nervous. And I love how much it's grown. I don't want to chop it, but at the same time, what the heck do I do with this thing? She's just, she's too much. But I think that she's gonna be due for a repot soon. She's been living so happily in this no drainage pot for too long. Um, it's been a year now because I acquired this last Christmas or last December. So yeah, it's been living in here for a really long time. Um, still not completely root bound, but certainly getting there. I'm thinking maybe by mid spring, she's gonna be screaming for a new pot but I hate watering this plant because it's really hard to like actually get to the soil with all these paddles in the way. Um, I have to like find a, find a place to water, just like push it forward and go like this. But yeah, I'm, I'm really, really not looking forward to repotting this one. I feel like I'm gonna snap so many leaves and it's just gonna be a giant disaster. 
this Deschidia new malaria has gone crazy. Um, it's pretty much growing exactly the way I want it to grow. It's just a little bit more crazy than I envisioned. But um, yeah, she's she's fully sort of like climbing now and also trailing at the same time. So I don't know how much longer this one can live in there, but she's going. She's going and she's not stopping. Another one that has started growing for me is this holly. Ho I always call it a holly. Holly. Wait. Holly polynura. I always call it a holly polynura. Hoya polynura. Um, yeah, it pushed out this growth point on the side, so I am very, very, very happy about that one. I've always been scared to own this, this plant, but it's been surprisingly uh, low maintenance, or like, seemingly, seemingly easy. Hasn't really, um, given me any trouble so far. I feel like everything um, that I would want to show you in here, I want to save for my video. So, um, honestly, I feel kind of tapped out for the night. I was going to go grab the plants in the shower and go do another round of um, treatments for the second shelf. But I would rather just not. So, um, tomorrow's schedule, Wednesday. I don't really know what's going on tomorrow, but I think tomorrow I'd like to finish up doing pest prevention on that shelf. And that might be it because I I actually have to film a whole video tomorrow that needs to go up on Saturday. So a little bit pressed for time, but um, yeah, that's it. Sorry, my brain stopped working, so I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> that I can say in literally like 110% confidency, confidency? <laughs> confidency, is that a word? Confidency, is confidency a word?
Alright guys, this is one last look at this Jose Bono. I am running him downstairs back to Nick's house. Um, he's gonna take back ownership. I feel like I've seen I've seen some good some good action with this plant and um, I think it's just time time to go home. So if you're wondering what happened to this one, it's because um, we had to we had to break up. So I just wanted to at least document it one more time before I let her go because I am very proud at how much this has grown um, since it's been in my care. But Nick misses her and for good reason. Happy Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. Freaking day is it? Thursday. Oh no, it's Thursday. So um, you will notice that yesterday I got looks crooked again. I don't know if it's just my tripod that's crooked or my retinas or the apartment or the world. But I will tell you, I got my um, passport photo taken yesterday. It took us like nine tries to get it right because apparently my head is tilted. And the guy was like, the guy was super sweet, but he was like trying to, you know, tell me what to do. And I felt like I was like this, like, like this. He's like, oh yeah, it's perfect. It's straight. And I'm like, dude, there's no way I'm straight. I felt so weird. And then took the photo, got the photo. My head was straight. I don't understand when I'm okay. This feels straight to me. Oh, it's tilted. Guys, I don't like this. Hello. <laughs> Hi. You want to say anything to your friends? <laughs> um, so yeah, I got cut off yesterday because I had. So I got cut off yesterday because I had a crisis with my memory card that nearly gave me a hernia. I thought I was gonna lose like almost 100 gigabytes of footage. Don't ask me why I have 100 gigabytes of videos on my camera, but um, safe to say after I diagnosed and fixed the problem, I was in a sweat and was like, nope, I am not filming anymore. But the good news is I got a care package this morning and um, it is from my lovely friends at TPS Nutrients. Uh, if you guys are regulars to this channel, you know that I have been on a TPS kick for the last year or I don't know how long it's been, but right now I'm using the TPS Billion Mycorrhizal Inoculant, I'm using the TPS One Fertilizer, I'm using the TPS One Liquid Conditioner, um, when I'm in, back in the States I'm eventually going to start using the TPS CalMag, um, but they reached out to me because Apparently they've launched a new line of indoor plant fertilizer. Now, I'm just being completely honest here. Um, I wasn't really sure what that meant because the formulation of their current fertilizer is totally fine for house plants. So I have yet to really look into the active ingredients in terms of how it compares to the fertilizer I'm using from them already. But uh, they released a new line of, of fertilizers and I'll throw it up here. And I'm just, but I'm being just like from a consumer standpoint and not the fact that I've been gifted um, these products, but I, was looking at the ingredients for their like fiddle leaf fig, um, their fiddle leaf fig fertilizer, their monstera fertilizer, their um, indoor plant fertilizer, and it's all the same because I was just curious like how the formulation was different from one another because in theory, I mean not in theory, but you could just use the same fertilizer for both of those plants. Um, and they told me that it's really just the dosing that's different. So I will say off the bat, if you are confused about which one to get, it's pretty much all the same, which is why I have opted to get the basic indoor plant food. So let me show you the ones I got. So this is the indoor plant food and I think their branding for the indoor house stuff is really cute. It's very different from their normal stuff. Um, and the ingredients on this, it's a 312 
Uh, and yeah, it's, I mean, maybe I should, no, I'm gonna do, I think I'll do a separate video for my fertilization and I'll compare this to the TPS1, I'll compare it to um, liquid gold leaf and all that stuff, but whatever. I got the indoor plant food, so I'm excited to try this one. Um, I also got orchid plant food because I have two orchids in my collection that are just getting regular fertilizer. Um, and this one is a 222 solution. And then you guys are gonna be surprised about this, but I also got an herbs and leafy green plant food. Um, this one is a 322. And the reason that I got this one is because I'm gonna try growing herbs inside. Now, I am not good at growing herbs, um, not even basil, which is notorious for just growing like a weed. Same with mint, notorious for growing like a weed, but I've just not been able to do it. Um, I have gotten a plot, not at the cemetery. Um, I've gotten a plot, I wanna be cremated. I've gotten a plot over at our community garden, which is just like a two or three minute walk away from my apartment. Um, and I am gonna be growing veggies and uh, herbs outside for the first time. But um, I do wanna try growing stuff inside, uh, primarily green onions, mint, and maybe something else. Sorry, Pudge is hyped. He thinks that someone is at the door because I went to get this package. But uh, I, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try using this, and I think I'm gonna try like a hydroponic system. Um, I'm thinking of maybe grabbing the mother light setup. I yeah, I am actually excited to try all of these products because I love TPS stuff so far. Um, I have nothing bad to say about them. I think that the products are great. The price point is spot on. And um, yeah, I, I just, I have high hopes for this, but I am gonna be completely honest in my reviews. I'm not going to try and fluff it up and try and sell you guys anything. Um, I just wanna be like as honest uh, as possible from the get go. So yeah, I am grateful that TPS um, wanted to like work with me and have me try it out. So it is available on Amazon right now. You can grab a bottle if you want. I don't think they're like really advertising it a lot right now, but uh, from what I spoke, from the conversation that I had with them, apparently it was selling really well. So yeah, hopefully we have some good results with that. And um, I did, you know, mention, I did mention that I wasn't wanting to introduce any new fertilizers in my routine because I was happy with, with them, but I will make an exception for TPS. So anyway, um, it's actually like 1.30 right now. You guys can see that I got all of my plants back on the shelf from yesterday because my husband needed to take a shower this morning. I'm pretty much done with the pest treatments on this wall. I've done my Monstera, I've done my Mykins. Oh, you can't see, but I moved my Mykins up here. Um, I've done all of these trailing guys already, so I'm good out here in terms of pest prevention, but I do need to do some in the plant room. But, sorry, I told you the time. Uh, it's 1.30, this one's gonna go down in a couple hours, and I need to finish filming a vlog uh, that I got cut off from doing yesterday, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'll probably meet you in the plant room in a second. We are in my very messy plant room now, but um, I mentioned today's Thursday. Tomorrow is the first day of the Tropicals plants pop-up at North Shore Tropicals. I did briefly say that there was a delay with the delivery and there still is, but just not as severe as she thought. So um, the event is just gonna start a little bit later tomorrow instead of it being in the morning. But um, Alice and I purged and we I have the loudest dishwasher in the history of all dishwashers. Um, what was I saying? I'm getting distracted. So, as you guys know, Alice and I purged earlier this week or over the weekend, and we set pickup to be at the event. So I need to get everything bagged and labeled so that the people who um, claim stuff can just go to the event, find their bag, and, and grab it. But I want to make sure that everything is visibly pest free before I get things bagged and I'm just gonna do one last sort of like 
I'm gonna say a preventative spray because when I put these um, for sale in the purge, I did check them. I didn't see any pests. And I did mention in the purge that, you know, we had been dealing with pests or I had been dealing with pests and just to be cautious when you're bringing these home or don't bid on it if you're not comfortable with pests. So I was um, honest and upfront. I just feel like if that is something that you have been dealing with, uh, you should just be, just be honest about it. I mean, I feel like there's this weird sort of taboo around having pests, like it, it, makes you like gross or like it makes you like a bad plant parent because you have pests like we are literally in the hobby of live plants um i think if you have the expectation that you will never ever have a pest or you never want to have a pest i mean obviously no one wants to have pests but i think if you have that expectation that you like you will just not tolerate pests i think you're gonna have a terrible time in this hobby so um, all that to say, I am going to be spraying them down one last time. Um, I'm going to do one last just sort of thorough inspection and make sure I don't see any visible pests. And if I do, then I'm going to contact the sellers and just kind of let them know or, and give them the option to continue with the purchase or um, if they want a refund because I'm totally fine with either. And then um, another thing that I need to do today is clean my plant room again. I feel like I'm just constantly cleaning this plant room, but the reality the reality of it is that with me doing YouTube as often as I'm doing it, it's like it's kind of just prone to getting terribly terribly messy. This one is actually going to Alice, so I'm not super worried about this one. Alice knows the deal. So far, so good. I'm not seeing any thrips, no spider mites. I actually messaged Coppert a couple hours ago, um, getting some advice on which products I can use together. Um, but I'm leaning towards using this product that is it's like a spike mite and wait, is it spike mite and like Thripex together. If you don't know what if you don't know what copper it is, it's the predatory um, bug predatory mite company in Canada that uh, everyone here gets their predatories from. I've never actually ordered myself. I've always purchased from other people, and I'm just kind of in a place now where I'm like, you know what? I'm a big girl. I'm gonna do it myself. So now that I am feeling like I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with my pests. Like right now is like the best my pest situation has been in like a year. And I want to keep it that way. And I told you I am not going to repeat what happened last year. Um, I don't want to get lazy. I don't want to get too comfortable. I'm literally like, not today. So yeah, I want to just make sure that throughout the year that I always have some kind of mite or something that I'm using to defend my babies against these damn pests that just... I don't know why they like my house so much. So anyway, um, the good news is still not seeing any pests on it, which is great. So I'm going to just run these over to the shower and then give them a spray and then while they're um, drying, I'm going to just quickly do laps around this <laughs> room and clean up a little bit.
Oreos that I'm still gonna fit from being transplanted, repotted. <sighs> okay, I look crazy with this on my neck. So, um, just wanted to quickly show you from when I was cleaning vessels, the little towel situation. It is like 95% dry. I just feel a little dampness and let me take you, I don't want you to see in my trash, but it's basically all dry enough for all of this to just come right off in the trash. So now it's, I mean, as clean as it can get and then this can just be washed and reused the next time I need to wash vessels. I just feel a lot better about not having all of that go down my sink if I can help it because years of doing this hobby and just sort of carelessly washing anything down the drain and being done with it, out of sight, out of mind, will catch up to you. I hope it doesn't, but it can. I just finished washing my box of laziness and I already have an entire bin that's filled up again. It never ends. Now that everything's been sprayed down, I'm going to start packaging them and labeling them just so it's easy for pickup. So one person got a few things. This person specifically is driving from out of town or is coming from out of town and she's taking a ferry back. So I feel like I might need to put it in something a little bit more secure than this. I think I'll put it in here to keep them all like tight together and then I'll put it in another bag. Um, and since she's going on a ferry, I don't want to just give her something in water. So I'm going to have to probably put that in moss. I'm literally using the nastiest cup but oddly, it's the cup that my mom labeled um, that had the summer glory. So kind of worked perfectly. And then this random little lid that I found fits perfectly over this cup. So it'll be like a little, whoa, a little propagation dome. But at least now I can contain some of that moisture and humidity and not be worried about it drying out as fast. How freaking perfect is that? Okay, let's put a little smiley face on this cup. Actually, let's put it all over the cup. Too cute. All right, now I can get this one packaged up. Small, but at least it has like a solid bottom. One is done. I would like to take my pot back. I think it's still in the, I think it's still in the original nursery pot. I can't give her the plant like this. Look at it. It's come out of the pot so much. But because I've been in crazy purge mode, I'm all out of like extra pots, like the big nursery pots. I just donated a massive bag of them. Um, I have to pee. epiphany while on the loo um i'm just gonna repot it do i want to repot right now no am i gonna give her a plant that looks like this hell no 
I was gonna use landscape fabric at the bottom of this so that the soil doesn't come out, but I never know what people's thoughts are when they see a drainage hole that's covered up. And I don't recognize the person who bought this for me. Um, they're, the group that I'm a part of, the local group I'm a part of, has exploded since I joined. And it started as like 600 members when I joined and now it's at like 7,000. So I like really don't know a lot of people that are active in the group now. So anyway, if you know these, if this was a buyer or someone locally that like I recognize, I would, I would know if they're okay with no drainage holes or not. But since I don't know this person, I'm just gonna assume that they want drainage holes. I'm just gonna do a simple repot. non-invasive repot. I literally just plucked it out of there and placed it into this new pot so it really should not go through a lot of stress, hopefully. Um, and now I need a bag for her. I have my box from earlier that I'm just going to cut apart and use for the base of that bag. see fine but something I didn't tell you about is over like ever since it happened just every once in a while like randomly I will see flashing lights on the side and like it's like you see something in the mm -hmm. peripheral in the corner of the eye I get that even though there's nothing there so I told him about it and he, he did a bunch of tests and he's just like yeah the eyesight's fine but he's like but what could have happened is a potential so basically, your eye sits in what I think is called vitreous humor. It's like this viscous kind of stuff that it like I think coats the nerve or just whatever. Yeah. He's like there might be a partial detachment of that. Go see an optometrist right away, and then they'll take a look, and then they'll if they need to, they might um, refer me to an ophthalmologist if it's something serious. So I gotta get on that right away. Call. You secret. Keeper. I just didn't want to this worry marriage you. is falling apart. <laughs> I, I honestly, I knew you would freak out if I if I was like, hey babe, I'm seeing a bunch of like, let's, yeah, I well, wanted to see if it would go away, and and it has, it has definitely got better. So, um, you're dead to me. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> you're exactly why. <laughs> out of my oh. vision, oh, out man. of my eyesight. You look better. Wait, is that an eyesight pun, or is that literally just saying, get the hell out of me? Both, it's a pun, and get the hell out of my face. Secret keeper. My phone. You're grounded. Oh, no. So apparently my husband's been keeping secrets from me. That's good news. Um, okay, so this person got 
this Berlin Marks this big ass Baltic blue and a bunch of my pots which are right here and I did say they were used but I think I'm gonna rinse them off because I'm so neurotic and I care what people think about me so I'll be right back oh. why did I just sit down like a senior citizen <laughs> this is a lot more labor intensive than I thought it was gonna be but it's time to add the stickers because plant mail or plant unpackaging is probably one of the greatest joys in life along with bearing a child from what I've heard but uh can't say I have any first-hand experience with that um forgot to put some stickers on this Baltic blue but that's okay that is the ugliest effing handwriting I've ever seen in my life I don't know what happened there. I have a lot of respect for people who run like online or just any plant shop really that ships plants. It is not easy. I feel like it's Stressful. There's a lot of pressure on the shops to get it right, not to mention the actual transit of it, not knowing what kind of review you're going to get. I don't think I can handle that stress. Like, I have a lot of other types of work stress, but I feel like that stress, I would not be able to handle it. Like, plant shop, plant shop, plant shop ownership is not for everyone. Like I see a lot of the things that Lauren goes through behind the scenes, just how much <sighs> woman hours and just like blood, sweat and tears go into caring for these plants full time year round. It's, it's a lot. I don't think that I could do it. If I did own a plant shop, I probably wouldn't like the hobby as much. That's just being completely honest. So for people who own plant shops, and still find the time to like love on their own plants, that's that's next level. I'm definitely not there. Um, I wish I could have tucked this guy's head in, but he's a big one. So that's actually it. Um, the pink princess I'm giving to Alice, as well as, um, whoa, that's big. I feel like there were, like there were multiple things I needed to give Alice. So this one's going to her. Um, she passed on the, um, what is it? My, my serpent's chunk. I think there was more I had to give her. Hmm. What did I have to give her? Okay, well. I'm just gonna wait for her to text me back. Um, oh, I need to put some stickers on hers, even though I know she's going to repot it. She might not repot this chunk though, so let's just get some happy faces on it for good luck. Something that I've been wanting to do this year, and this is just kind of something to just not do plant stuff and get away from screens and whatever. Um, I wanna start painting river rocks just, I don't know, any kind of design on it, something goofy, silly and goofy to keep my plants company. I can just put them in each pot and they can all have a little good luck charm. I don't know, I thought it would be cute. I feel like we didn't really do much today, but um, I have to conserve my energy for tomorrow. It's gonna be a long day. I'm not really sure what the schedule is gonna look like, but I know that I'm gonna be gone pretty much from lunchtime up until maybe the early evening and all of the socializing and being out in the cold and in the rain maybe is going to just take it out of me so I want to be rested so yeah tomorrow I'll just give you a peek at the shop give you a peek at the plants and um, just I don't know I guess a look at the pop-up event although I'm not really good at filming at events because I get shy
and I feel really self-conscious when I have my camera out but I'll let you guys see as much as possible and then I think we're gonna wrap it up or I might film till Sunday I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Okay, so obviously I wanted a VGI narrow and they have some. Look how beautiful this one is. So this is 115. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. They have two of them. This one's nicer, but they're both really nice. But I'm being realistic and I'm gonna get a smaller one because I don't need one this big. I mean, it's, I would love it's one that nice big. to have, but it's not yeah. it's not a necessity. I think this will be easier to acclimate anyways. Yeah, I'm I'm drawn towards this one. What are you thinking? Is that the one I pointed? Earlier? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I really like this one. I like it when they kinda like go inwards at the at the top. It looks like your pop socket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think I'm gonna get this one. I'm trying What's not to the make other a one big mess. Um, Any of these ones? Uh, these ones were uh, not as... This one's... Like, they're they're definitely that one narrow. Like, yeah, they're narrow, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know. This one just... Yeah, because see, this one has, like, fatter lobes. That one has narrower lobes. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the one. They also Ooh, finally Lux Darks. Look at how <gasps> beautiful this is. It's like this Without the glare. blackberry color. But I'm not, I'm gonna, not going to do it. It's 125. It's not bad. It's not bad. Oh. But... There's plenty of Luxes to go around. Yeah, I don't I feel like the VCI narrow is harder. Oh, this is a Lux Debilis. Oh, that's pretty. It is really. I really like the sheen on it. It's almost like a S or an El Guapo color. Oh, El Guapo. I'm still getting used to it. I can't. I can't. It's like calling um, a Sansevieria Dracaena. <laughs> yeah. These are really nice. The queen, oh, dark and gosh. narrow. Yeah. It's in really great shape too. But no. <laughs> but no. I have a I have a narrow dark, but it's just not oh. growing very big. We didn't get any Gloriosums, but these are very pretty. What are they labeled as? Zebra. Uh, gl labeled? yeah. yeah. Ah! Oh. Stop it. Um, what else? There's some um, Luxurians Radiante, Ragosum. I do like this texture, but it's. I don't think this is a plant that I would love long term. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard mm -hmm. to see with the glare. Oh, there you the, go. I like the texture of it, though. So. Yeah, I think it's, this is kind of plenty of admire from afar. Yeah, totally. And then label box of things. Ah, okay, sorry. I was just going to ask you. Um, did you want me to leave it on uh -oh. tape in case we do find the, uh... Wait, not Look how cute. Oh, it's cute. Okay, not the dress one. I, kind of I feel like this the sinus... Such a hard shape. Yeah, I feel like the sinus could be really cute as it matures. Mm, maybe I'll take this one. Yeah, it's nice. It's only $35. Yeah. Uh, see, it's like not as wide as this guy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I want like a, a wide... Like, I feel like this one back. has like good potential. Crystal black, this color. Sorry, I'm so <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Just pretend we're not here. And that's pretty much all that has spoken to me on this shelf. But we are. What's back here? Regales. And then we're gonna go. SD Marona. Yep. Big plant. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yes. Zooming in on Lauren's <laughs> Oh my god, it's huge. <gasps> it's massive. All right, well, I think that's good for me. I'm going to set this little guy aside. Yay, finally. How much is it? $50. What a good deal. I'm happy. Because I'm pretty sure this is the size that I got it at, and it was $100 US. I don't want yeah, I plus feel, everything else. And I feel comfortable oh. acclimatizing this size. Oh my gosh, look at this leaf. Mm. It's vented. It's, mine. it's so narrow. Yay! Woohoo! <gasps> yeah. 
It got vented. Oh my god, that feels so, so like, um, nice. Like you're in surgery and you just infection the baby. <laughs> so wrinkly. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. But yeah, let's go look in the shop. Every time I pack Follow me. So one thing I did want to point out was... The... Drink. Oh, the Red Anderson. Oh, <laughs> I was talking Oh, about the drink. drink. Um, I would love to have this plant. Oh, she's having that issue too with the brownie. Mm. I don't know what that is, you guys. I think it's fertilizer related, but I don't know if it's over or under. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Fred Anderson. Uh, she said it's a fertilization thing, maybe. Uh, Jing's theory is that it happens when it's in the catafil or the petiolar sheath for too long. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a demon, but yeah. it's beautiful. It is pr pretty. It's, yeah, because this happens not just on the variegated parts, also on the, mm -hmm. the green parts. Yep, yep. Um, another thing I want to show you guys are these big old philodendron green dowels. I don't know where the heck these came from, but they're huge. Oh my goodness. They're huge. This light is really harsh. Ooh. Ooh. Else is of note here. Oh, oh I'm oh, yeah. getting these because look, they look like freaking cocoa puffs. And they're really, it's a really pretty, like taupey brown. It's so pretty, love it. Um, I wish she had more. I know. You can share this bag. No, it's okay. Oh, I don't oh, use like that much. <gasps> yeah. Lauren asked Gilberto to include a plant for giveaway for anyone buying. Look at, the size. Look at the size next to me. Almost as tall as me. It's crazy. If I win this thing, I'll be terrified. You? I would give it to Alice. What? To no, I don't. Size for me. <laughs> you could just empty out your grow tent and have this on the floor. And I would. Just take up the whole thing. I would. And there's so many leaves. One, two, three, four. Four leaves. It's huge. Yeah, so if, I mean, it'll be too late by the time you see this video, but anyone who is here buying plants will get entered to win this. Yeah, it's so pretty. I remember in 2020, a queen this size would have cost a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah. yeah, easily. And now he's just like, here, take this for yeah, the giveaway. Giveaway. Um, maybe just a few more. These are really cool. <gasps> Wait, I saw something. Are these like the Lucubons? Yeah. It looks so They're huge. blah on camera on the viewfinder. It looks so much nicer in person. I know. God damn it's it. It's very like reptile. Reptilian. Yeah, because it's so backlit, but here, let me take it down. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. This is so nice. What the heck? It's just like such a nice arrow shape. And I love that the ends of it, it almost looks like you cut it out. <laughs> There's like no, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ooh, that lighting is pretty. Sorry, 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 sorry. Anna, sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's so sorry. sorry. She's so sorry. She's so <laughs> Oh my god, her begonia! <laughs> 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 what um, is happening over here, begonia guy? Oh. What? But these are um, is it variegated hookerize? Uh, is it hookerai? I'm not sure, but they have these at Garden Works. Too. Yeah, same supplier. I feel like I just don't like the uh, the, the growth, growth pattern. pattern. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, <gasps> and if anyone's looking for a floor to you see this color. Whoa, what the heck? That's hot pink. Whoa. Wait, where, wait, you were saying? Oh yeah, if anyone's mm -hmm. looking for Florida Beauties, she has, that's not a Florida Beauty. <laughs> she has some for very good prices. Really nice jeans. Yeah, the jeans are good. It's uh, 160. Lightly rooted. Lightly rooted. And then she's also got this Var Amplissum. Mm -hmm. I actually quite like this. Yeah, it's pretty. It's like, got Heliconia vibes. Yeah. But probably easier to grow. These are two plants. How much is that one? 125. 
nice. Is this, is this no, you just gym? act like we're not here. Like, oh, we're no. Not here. These were like really hard to find for a little while. Yeah. And they're all coming from Indonesia, Thailand. Oh, there's more here too. Ugh. This guy is pretty. You guys would not believe the day I had yesterday. Let me tell you. Pudge, I'm right here, babe. Pudge, I'm literally right here. No. Okay. Is my dog losing his hearing? Pudge, I'm right here. Oh my gosh. Are you okay? Are you getting old? Do we need to get your hearing checked? Poor thing. He was like looking in the bedroom like, huh, huh, wait. 
So um, starting with the good stuff, yeah, event went really well. I did get something. I'm doing my own import video. It's probably not going to go up for a while because I already have a video on how I acclimatize things. So I wanted to do a video on the process from import until maybe a month um, and just kind of show you what the progression looks like over a month. So that won't go up until maybe the end of March. Besides that, I got to meet a few of you guys who follow me on Instagram or on this channel that are locals. And can I just say that I was like literally blown away at like the kindness and just like the warmth that I get from you guys. Like it's, it's actually like unfathom. Like I can't, I can't wrap my mind around the fact that like some of you guys are just like the most angelic people in the world. Um, I had one conversation in particular and she was just like essentially like spilling her heart to me and just like telling me about like how she had never really been into aeroids before and now she's just getting so much joy out of it and growing it out of greenhouses and how she like watches my videos with a friend every weekend and like I kept my composure during the conversation and I just wanted to be you know, I just, I wanted to enjoy like that moment with her. But then the second that she left, I was like, no, I was just like in tears. I had to go find Alice. I was like, Alice, Alice, like, where are you? I need you. And it was just, yeah, I don't know if it's because I'm on my period and I'm just like overly emotional, but like, holy freaking crap. Yesterday I was like feeling all the things and I don't know. I feel like if I saw a, a YouTuber that I follow in person, I probably would be too scared to like go up to them and like, say hi and I don't know. I, I, I just feel like I'd just be that person that was just like in the background like like this with my phone. But yeah, it was just really special. So thank you guys for like honestly making my day yesterday. I do get social anxiety, but I feel like the crowd that was there yesterday was just like a really, really good group. And um, yeah, I had fun. I actually like legit had fun. We stayed longer than we normally do. We were there for like five hours or something. Uh, Alice and I have a three hour max social battery. So five hours is like really good. But uh, yeah, that was the good part. And then my cramps and my PMS started getting really bad towards the end of the day. And so I asked Alice like if we, like we could go. And um, the second I got in the car, I felt like, um, I don't know if you guys have ever like passed out before, but before I faint, especially like during a panic attack, I get cold hands, cold feet, and cold face. And I almost get like a cold sweat. And I felt that and I was like, okay, either I'm gonna pass out or I'm gonna vomit in her car. And I have already had an incident where I almost vomited in her car. And uh, of course we hit traffic. And um, I think I get really motion sick in her car because it's really low to the ground and I'm not used to it. Like I, you know, I drive um, a mini SUV and like we're higher above the ground and like I, I don't feel as much on the road So when I'm in her car, it's kind of just like getting used to how it feels Especially as a passenger when you're not driving So I tend to get really motion sick in her car and I was already feeling nauseous and not feeling well But Alice, I feel like she She's very aware of like how my body works and that like many times I don't feel well and I didn't want to worry her because there was traffic I didn't want her to feel like she had to like rush or like be ready to like pull over and like um, so I could bar for something so I kept it to myself luckily she put on a Dateline podcast and it prevented us from like having a conversation because I felt like if I opened my mouth I was gonna vomit I meditated my way through that entire drive and um, this is one coping mechanism that if you guys have panic attacks like you have to learn how to meditate it's life-changing so i med meditated my way throughout the whole drive got to her house where my car was parked and i was like alice i literally almost threw up in your car she's like what the heck why didn't you tell me and i'm like this is why because you'd freak out so she's like come into the house like you can use the bathroom to barf and i was like no like the first time i go into your house it's not going to be so that i'm like hovering over your toilet vomiting She's like, okay, and I was like, I'm gonna be fine. Like, even if I have to barf, I have a bag, but like, I'll be okay, and I knew full well I was gonna barf the second she turned around. She walks away, I get in my car, I grab my, like this old McDonald's bag, and I just, it all comes out. I immediately felt a lot of relief, um, but the only bad thing was that I was still feeling very 
um, like faint, like my, I still hadn't gotten sensation fully back in my hands and my feet. Like they were still very cold and tingly. And I really, I felt so, so sleepy. Like I was about to, to pass out. So I left her house and I, I didn't want to be sitting in the, in the visitor's lot for too long. Cause I didn't want her to like worry about me. So I left her complex. I just like pulled off to the side of the street. I had water and like, just kind of tried to regain like sensation in my, my limbs finally felt well enough to drive but then i i like freaking forgot that it was a friday and it was rush hour traffic so what is usually like a 15 20 minute drive turned into a 40 minute drive while i was feeling so sick and nauseous i threw up one more time while i was driving finally made it home and i literally like i still have everything in a box i just i took off my makeup, I brushed my teeth, I went to bed. I was asleep from 6 p.m. until 10.30 p.m. Woke up to eat and went right back to sleep and I slept until nine this morning. So anyway, sorry for like the longest freaking story time ever. So yeah, uh, it was just a day yesterday and I'm feeling a lot better today, but still, I don't know. It's just the PMS, you guys, like I just, I didn't consent or ask to be born with a uterus. I actually didn't even ask to be born, but here I am. So like I said, I'm not gonna show you what I imported because I'm saving that for my import video, but I will show you some things that I grabbed yesterday. It's nothing super exciting, but just figured I'd show you anyway. Oh my God, I am so excited about this plant. I can't wait to show you guys. Let's get through the boring stuff first. I picked up a um, new bag of LECA from Lauren. If you guys know, I'm running really low on LECA and I love this LECA. Look at the color of it. It's like taupey, taupey. It's taupey and it just looks like Cocoa Puffs. They're so freaking cute. I'm definitely gonna be using this specific LECA for like a parfait method to use on this shelf because I. I want to see this LECA all the time. So um, I grabbed another bag of LECA and then I also, where's the other thing? Oh, I got another container of worm castings because I have been out of this for a while. Surprisingly, they didn't have it at the garden store that I went to last time. Like, I feel like their, their amendment section was like completely lacking. So luckily she had some. And then, uh, Freaking Lauren, she watched my video where I was talking about how I really missed having my clemenciorum and um, I, yeah, of course she chopped it for me and this is just like so crusty and disgusting. The leaves are so thick, they're razor sharp. I could literally poke an eye out with this leaf and it's like, it actually is so much thicker than any of the clemenciorums I owned before. Like. I don't, you can't tell, but my goodness, this thing is dumpstery trash. This is hot garbage and I'm so excited. And not only that, freaking Jing also gave me a clemenciorum. So now I have two clemenciorums again and I don't deserve the friends I have. I, I really, really don't. So thank you so much, Lauren, for that. I'm, I'm just so happy to have a clem again. I am not going to do what I did last time. I promise I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be better this time. Um, another plant that I got is this Hoya Thompsonii, which has been one of my wishlist Toyas for so long. I didn't even know Alice had one. I, well, I feel like I have a good handle on what her collection is. Like, like I do inventory of her collection, but I didn't know that she had this plant and I've been wanting it for so long, primarily because of how fuzzy and delicious these leaves are. So yeah, thank you so much, Alice. I, I thought this was like a propagation from her mother plant, but this is it. This is her whole plant. So I am going to chop this and um, try and get it out of this moss and give her a little piece back because she did mention she would like a little cutting later on. But the last one that I wanna show you is my Politiflora. This is, you guys, this is the sad Politiflorum that was once on its deathbed, for real. I think like the largest leaf that I grew on the palette was like this big, maybe even a little smaller. And it just, oh my God, it ripped. Oh my God. 
This must have happened yesterday. Oh no. Um, but yeah, I gave it to Alice because I just was having such a hard time growing this thing. It did not like anything that I did to it, did not like any conditions I gave it. So hopefully now I'll have some better luck with it now that it's been sort of spoiled and pampered by her. And I'm just like in love with this new leaf. It's so cute. I am very, very happy to have this back. I have missed it. It is one of my favorite um, anthuriums, but I just... Yeah, I, I had to give it to her at the time that I did because I think that if I didn't, she would not be here with us today. So thank you, Alice, for rehabbing her. I am very, very grateful. And it kind of looks like a new leaf is coming out, which is crazy. So I feel like this leaf is kind of like brand new still. I'm just so choked that I freaking dinged it yesterday. What the heck is wrong with you, Sherman? Again, thank you guys for making this series such um, a great one. It's so funny. I always think about like, you know, I, I, I'm not really like keeping up with like my analytics of YouTube as much as I probably should like to, you know, every YouTuber like wants to like grow their channel and see like what they're doing wrong or see what they can improve on. But I find that when I get too into the analytics that I become very like critical of myself and I feel like I'm only making content the way that YouTube wants me to make content and I don't really, I can't, I can't do that. Um, so yeah, I don't really like go into it that much but I do know that the best performing videos are my week of videos. Like I only have like 13,000 subs on here but like my week of videos have like almost 50,000 views on some of them, which is crazy. And I know that a lot of people um, have told me that they play these like weeks of on repeat or like they watch it again when they're doing plant chores because they like how long it is. And yeah, I, I always think about like uh, that comment that I got. It was a very, very long comment. I'm not gonna insert it. I just, I don't feel the need to, but it was basically critiquing me on how like I don't edit out enough. There are certain parts that should be left out, that my edit, that the, my, my videos need severe, severe editing, and that I'm like deterring a good demographic of people who would subscribe to me if I edited my videos better. And it's just, it's these backhanded, these backhanded compliments. Cause this person was like, yeah, it seems like you've got a lot to offer and like you have a good, you know, like personality for YouTube. But unfortunately, like with all the things that you leave in, it just is not gonna make people wanna subscribe to you. And listen, obviously I would love if this channel grew because it does take a lot of time to make videos and um, I'm not making nearly enough on this channel to justify the amount of hours I put in. But I do it because I just really love doing it and I feel like the people that are here, they get me, they understand my, my editing style, they understand why I make these really long videos and I just appreciate you guys so much. So thank you for being here and making this weird niche so successful, um, it really does mean a lot to me because I, I put I put so many man hours into these weeks of. Sometimes I'm like, gosh, is this even worth it? Like, you know, it's just to have these like weeks where I just feel so drained, but I get so much done and I 100% would not get this much done if you guys weren't watching. If I was making these three hour videos and putting it on YouTube and nobody was watching it and it was just going into the abyss, yeah, obviously I'd, I'd stop making them, but like so many of you watch it, so many of you engage with it and it's like, it's just, it's very heartwarming. So anyways, thank you. That's all I want to say is thank you so much. And um, yeah, hope you guys like this video. I hope that it wasn't redundant. I don't even freaking remember what I did this week. This week is a blur, but I feel like I got a lot done and that's all that matters. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. If you are new, welcome. If you are old, hello, hi, love you. And um, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube and I will see you in the next one.